So let me begin with how Tom um, inspired me to start this channel um, and start believing in myself as an artist again. Um, about a year ago, I saw Tom. It was uh, no response. I didn't really, it was something that was recommended because I like to look at a lot of new things on YouTube. Um, and somehow it ended up on my uh, recommendation list to watch. Um, so as it popped up, I, I put it on and I, it, at first I was kind of going, wait a minute. It's like the impression I had of him was he came across like, I, I wasn't sure, like as far as his rap, rapping style, I remember thinking, uh, it's amazing. I mean, I, I, I kept hearing it as he, as he's continuing through with the different, parts of it, I was, I was like, man, I don't think I've ever heard anything like this. Um, I've heard a lot of different stuff, but this is, there's something about this guy. Like he's, um, and that was my first exposure to him. I just kind of knew he was onto something. I was like, he's onto something. And for a while, you know, after that, I think I, I didn't really look at, I think I checked out one, one other video or something like that. Didn't quite get through it. And I was looking at a bunch of other stuff. So over that past over the past year i kept seeing stuff of his pop up a lot of it had like you know controversial um titles on it so i was i was kind of like um i don't know if i want to watch that right now i think i was kind of leaning uh, away from uh, these type of videos um for a while so it was so i didn't really see anything of his um after that until this year um I would want to say about a month ago. So now we're here in April and I guess back in March or just before that, I was watching church. Now that was a different, I saw that release and I, and I watched it and I was amazed. I mean, right off the bat, I was impressed with um, the video itself, but I was also, what really got me caught up in the show list or in that video was uh, Brandon, Brandon Hart um his lines too and just the whole the way that it was done so i was like wow this is not this is different so that kind of pulled me in and then i wanted to see what other people's reactions were because it looked like it was getting a lot of a lot of views so i started that's when i guess started really started down the rabbit hole because after i started watching some reactions to it like um one of the ones that really pulled me in was um um, Jen, Jen, uh, I forget the name right, but I know it's just Jen. This is Jen or something simple like that. But she, she responded and she had a real, like a real reaction to it. Cause she wasn't, ex I could tell she wasn't expecting for it to hit her as hard as it did, which it, which that hit me. Um, her reaction hit me back and I, and I was kind of like, okay, there's, there's something going on here. And the more reactions I started seeing, I started watching a lot more of Tom's stuff. Well, honestly, it was the first time I've ever encountered this kind of like um, fandom, if you will. I mean, I was myself, I wasn't caught up in it. I was up the whole night just watching reaction videos, different reactors to the same video. I think Church, I heard, must have heard it like 80 times and still didn't get tired of it because I was watching that much um, stuff about it or felt like that because I was up till like the next day. Obviously, that's an exaggeration because that would be like 80 times five minutes. It's a long time. But um, it felt I was up from the whole night till even to the next day, like during noon, I was just absorbed by all of the reactions. And so I was like, OK, there's something to this. This is like, you know, let me go check out some more stuff, more reactions. I'm pretty much going through the entire catalog and watching different reactors. And I'm just blown away every single time, just the messaging. Even, and there's more stuff, like stuff he's been putting out and spoken word and all this stuff. And I'm just like, you know, and I woke up one morning after like several days of doing this and just said, man, I should do a reaction channel, you know, because I, I want to join this community. I mean, I just love the whole vibe. I love the the way the community's talking with one. Like, I love the, I just love the the chatter. And I, like, I even participated with some of the comments myself. And I'm like, man. I want to join this community. Um, 
So then for a while, I just kind of sat on it trying to figure out how I was going to do it because I don't really have all my stuff in place yet. And as I started to evolve through that time, I also started looking at my own art that I had. I had put out an album. I play piano. It's like New Age style. I put that out a while back um, and never really pushed it. And then I started looking at those songs and I started listening to my own songs again. And I said, uh, I thought to myself, you know what? I do have a small subscriber base for it. I should probably start working on that. And so, you know, that's... As Tom inspired me, just his storyline is, is amazing where he starts um, with Dear Rappers. And so that was an inspiration to me. Like, there's no excuse. You know, I can't sit around and just say, oh, I'm going to wait for the perfect studio to show up for me and all this kind of stuff. Like, no, I can actually start from scratch. Even if I don't have a keyboard right now, I can work towards getting one. I went to a store and found the one I want. It's, um, it's only 1300 bucks, So I could come up with that in the next couple of months. Um, and I could try and build a channel around, you know, songs I could release. I could do a bunch of stuff with it. So, I mean, Tom really got me to pull the trigger on things that, uh, just the discussions, the things, he's, the things he's talking about. Um, in my opinion, like the kind of stuff that he's doing, um, takes a lot of courage and it's good to know that there's other people out there that are getting behind him because, um, I don't think he cares whether he's alone. Uh, the guy, I think that's what's amazing about him. He's going to say exactly what he wants to say. And it don't matter what anybody, they, the whole world could be against what he's, what his opinion is. But for Tom, that he has the right to, you know, he has the freedom and the right to state it however he sees it. And that's it. You know, there's, there's no apologies. Um, and that kind of courage, that kind of, uh, that kind of gumption um, is inspiring. It's kind of like, wait a minute. Well, what are we all afraid of? Because um, I really, you know, one of the things he says in his song is that we we have more in common. I mean, that's in White Boy, right? We have we have more in common than than what separates us or what the differences we have. And if you think about that logically, it's true. We have we have way more in common and. Uh, um, unfortunately, the current uh, climate, um, the real pandemic, in my opinion, or scaredemic or panicdemic, is uh, the mainstream narrative that focuses on our differences rather than what we have in common. And if we did just focus on our differences, then yeah, I mean, we can highlight those all day long and, and develop our own camps and just be divided and isolated. Um, takes courage to really speak out. Um, Tom's identifying something that's pretty deep in terms and simple and pretty basic because you know, me and my brother have talked about it. You know, I was in the military and so was he. We were both, we both served in the Marine Corps. And, um, you know, one of the main attacks as an enemy, if you're in war, one of the first things you strike is their, is their calm or communications. You hit the communications and your enemy is like, you know, they're all divided up, right? So you can just start picking them off. So it's like a it's like a strategy that's old as time. I mean, even if you were to go back to the Bible and people that were building a tower to get to heaven, that was the that was God's strike against them, right? Communication. He just went after the language. Um, I kinda look back on that as, you know, it was probably a test. You know, the I was thinking as a kid when I first heard that story. The Tower of Babel, I was like, well, if God just let them build this thing, they probably would have got into outer space and died. <laughs> you know, like you, or, you know, I don't know what materials they were building with, but, you know, if they built the pyramids, you know, they probably knew how to do stuff. So they probably could have got way up there. But I don't know. They would have to invent spacesuits or something if they kept going because they thought, you know, I guess they were trying to build to go to heaven. So the heavens are around the corner. Maybe they would have found outer space and thought, oh, my goodness, this is not heaven. Um, if anything is hell out there, right? <clears throat> so, uh, but I think it's, when I look back at that story now as an adult, I think of it as kind of, even if the people, if the people had a sincere approach to what they were doing, 
I think they would look past their differences. They would look past the language barriers. And the universal language, of course, was for construction, it's math, right? So anybody can speak that language. So they could have kept building and just said, hey, we'll work around the differences in our lingo and we'll figure this out. In fact, they all split up and went their ways and you know, spread out over the earth. Just kind of proof they, they kind of had a false motive from the get-go. Um, and yeah, they were divided up, or our ancestors, if you will, if you want to believe that story. Um, but yeah, just coming back to uh, communications itself, Tom is, is fighting the same battle in return. He's single-handedly <laughs> attacking communications. Um, back at the people who are attacking communication, right? They're attacking our calm. And Tom's turning around and attacking their calm the same way. He's like, okay, I'm going to speak a universal language. Um, and it's interesting that hip hop rap has become kind of a dominant language in our culture. It's like, I didn't think, you know, I grew up in the 80s. I think the first time I ever heard rap was Run DMC. That was the first time I heard that art form. And I, and I thought, oh, they're just like, they're rhyming, they're doing poems, like with a beat, you know? And um, I remember a lot of the news and the headliners at the time were like, oh, this is a fad or, you know, short for a fade away. It's a fade, it's gonna fade away. You know, it's gonna be, there's gonna be other forms of music and, you know, rap was just, they'll just come and go. Um, and <laughs> dead wrong, right? That prediction, it's like everywhere. Like it's in almost in every culture, uh, this form of this art form of rap, and it's a pervasive language. It's a powerful language that uh, it can. It's almost like you know, if you want to believe our well, computers were modeled after our brains. If you want to believe in in computers and so forth, our the the function of our brains. You're looking at like algorithms. You know, rapping as a communication style is probably spitting algorithms into people's thought patterns. Um, and Tom is talking about some deep stuff where these things can affect, um, you know, affect people's thought process or their their mindset. Or it's if it's that powerful of a tool that it's it's getting out there and it hasn't gone away. Like, you know, who knows if rap existed before that? I'm just saying for me. It existed as soon as I heard Run DMC. <laughs> Before that, it was more singing, you know, and singing is also, is another form of communication that's powerful, right? We, we remember nursery rhymes, we remember, you know, just anything that's put to a tune, sometimes that weaves its way into our minds and our hearts and our, it, it really communicates to us right, on a personal level. It gives us ideas, sparks, um, inspiration, all kinds of things like that. So just, man, just the discussion that Tom's creating around his music, it's, I believe it's, I haven't seen anything like it. I mean, I've seen a lot, but just seeing people's responses and some of these reactors, I mean, not that, not that I want to exploit this and take advantage of this wave, because a lot of these reactors are blowing up off of Tom's stuff and they're getting, you know, I don't know how the monetization thing works because I haven't really you know, done a reaction theme before. I know some of it, there's copyrights or there's strikes and then they can be like, you know, you won't get monetized, but I guess you get to keep the views and uh, the subscriber base. And, and then of course you can market your own stuff, your own merch. A lot of people are doing that to build, build up their business. I mean, it's a pivot, right? Because what else are we going to do now after the, after a lot of the, the work is, has gone away and people that are, um, you know, i.e. vulnerable to the, you know, and if there is a real, like, even if this didn't affect it as much as we thought it would, I mean, the numbers don't seem to support, like, every, you know, I don't see, like, uh, the Black Plague, where, from what I've heard, the stories were horrendous, you know, everybody around you is just dying like flies, right? That's the Black Plague, so we didn't have a Black Plague for sure, because we would have seen it, we would have known, it would have been pretty obvious, but... Who's to say that's not coming, right? Who's to say something's... Because the way we reacted to this one, if something else comes out, you know we're going to... You know they're going to go right back to it. You know, get back in your house. We've got drones out here. We don't want this to spread. So who knows, man? This may be a, a continual scare tactic 